Over the last 100 years, several key inventions have made mankind productive. Number one, it's the aeroplane by the Wright brothers. Fast forward to 1948, Maurice Wills decides to build the silhouette of the most capable 4x4 ever built by man along the sandy shores of the UK Isles. Fast forward, 70 years later, it's time to rethink and redesign the most capable off-roader the planet has ever seen. Ladies and gentlemen, today's on Kai Big Boy Trev, we introduce to you the Land Rover Defender for your visual pleasure. So we start this particular review with identifying the key elements that make a Land Rover a Land Rover. Floating roof line, clamshell bonnet, circular headlamps, and of course the logo emblazoned on the grille, signifying the pedigree that this brand has actually had for over 70 years and counting. So this brand new Defender has not strayed away from the original, but the interpretation is different. It's geared towards the 21st century explorer. So clearly, visually, as you can see, not too much difference, but just been interpreted for the younger generation. And of course, some nostalgic aspects of the vehicle, including this chakra plate, which is plastic, putting on top of the bonnet signifies the previous generation one and two. Those were key visual aids that would make you remember that it is a Land Rover. Obviously, as you move to the side, again, you do have these to be fins, now it's grills. On the left hand side, this signifies the previous generation one of the Defender. So one is the aesthetic value. The other one on the left hand side actually is a vent where you can actually put a snorkel. Remember, this car is highly accessorized. You can actually put a snorkel and allow this car to have a wading depth of 900 millimeters. It is not possible without the use of these certain elements that Maurice Wilkes envisioned about the Defender. Now, Side profile as well, as you can see, typical Land Rover. The Defender from the 90 had this floating roof line and of course you do have this alpine sort of glass, nostalgic of the previous Land Rovers again. Bold lines, not too much curviness, but on the side profile as you can see, bold lines that are curving out, exactly giving you that this car is as aggressive as it can be. And of course, there's a plastic cladding that runs across the lower part of the doors. This also allows this car to go off-road and avoid scratch marks as well as having this part scarf plates that prevents you from getting dirty when you're getting into and out of the Land Rover. This plastic trim ensures that you remain clean when you're going a bit of road. Not that it matters but yes it does. This rear third of this particular car again signifying the heritage of the Land Rover family. The Defender actually had this rare paint with the Land Rover badge on it. So still creating a bit of nostalgia. Jerry McGovern is very clever, ensuring that some of the key elements that people remember about a Land Rover are still instilled on this brand new platform. So come on to the rear side again. The traditional wheel on the rear door, standard on this particular model. And of course, as you can see, the lights on this particular car, they are brand new LED design, but if you remember the older Defenders, they used to have those two lights that were there. So one for braking, one for parking, and then the turn signal. They're putting it like the silhouette of the previous generation. In fact, Series 1 actually had two circular knobs. So at night, when you look at the pattern, it's circular reminding you that this particular car still retains that heritage that Land Rover have been played over for 70 years. And of course, remember the previous generation used to have some trim, it a gutter. So what they've done, they removed that, then they've put an edgy design just to give this car that genre square that also most modern SUVs have. But still, you can still tell the design is still there from 1948. So ladies and gentlemen, this has been a long time coming. We finally reveal the interior of the Land Rover Defender 2010 the next generation of the Defender nameplate and I can tell you I am not disappointed. I actually had a chance to see the mock-up at the Frankfurt International Motor Show last year and I can tell you matters are not different. The real production model looks absolutely stunning. 
this is the next generation of design courtesy of Jerry McGovern who's the head honcho at Land Rover and has designed this car to give you that feel that this is the next generation of the SUV, the toughest SUV in the business and I can tell you, I am amazed by the way Land Rover have employed so many design cues away from the previous LRX concept which was actually launched in 2010 as a preview of what this 2020 Defender is all about. So let's start with the dashboard. Now the dashboard is one design piece that I love. Remember they're trying to create that harmony between the previous generation Defender and the current one. Well, it looks nothing like it. It's just a totally new design theme. So what Land Rover have done is to create a dashboard that is forward facing to create an illusion of space. However, because it's an utilitarian vehicle, they've actually introduced a very long design theme for a grab handle that extends all the way to the passenger side. And of course, in between it, instead of having just a big space where you can put stuff, they've actually bored inside the dashboard and have that defense a nameplate on it it's plastic so on top you do have very interesting plastic such as uh, rough for grip of course and then you have stitched leather on the grab handle that extends all the way to this part so it looks like it's a one piece but it's not but it's just a unique design theme courtesy of land rover and of course this being an suv the name of the game is space so plenty of space here you can actually charge your phone there's actually plenty of usb ports that are across the cabin i think there's 16 in total and i can tell you when you're in the defender this thing speaks utilitarian it speaks form and functionality all together in one part now obviously the highlight of this particular dashboard is this centerpiece over here so what land rover have done because you have different derivatives the 90 110 and 130 this particular one is a high spec hsc version so in between you can actually have it specced with the seat so like a baby seat here so you can actually have a seat here so it sits 3 3 Amazing stuff. That's on the 190, but not on this one. But this particular one, the center console is right here. It's a floating tablet style design. So you do, you do have fully integrated digital display and there are two. So one is a 10 inch. The other one on the instrument binnacle is a 12 inch. And this is a new system called the PV Pro. PV Pro. It's a floating design, tablet design, multi-information display that actually works in conjunction with this other 12 inch instrument binnacle that's fully digital to give you a user experience that you've never seen in an SUV. Amazing stuff. So what Land Rover have done is to combine certain aspects of the vehicle. So navigation, climate control, radio and all that and include machine learning or AI. That is the next step of evolution. So basically this system learns your patterns and habits and adapts the car for you to, you know, be able to become very, very practical and productivity is enhanced courtesy of this system. Right below it, you do have, uh, actually it's a gearbox console, but it's also enhanced with the AC and of course the terrain response to system that is embedded on this. So again, Land Rover have reduced the number of buttons because they like that minimalistic look. So on, on the two dials, it's climate control and you can actually control even the seats. So you have, um, uh, perforated air cooled and heated seats and you can control that on the dials and of course you do have um, one thing that i do love the terrain response management is also placed on this so they've tried to combine certain function with this whole system to give you that flexibility that you can also use on the pv pro and of course the instrument being a call and we're gonna see that later on coming around to the back of the land rover defender and i'm going to talk about something that you would never imagine you can talk about when you're talking about a defender and that is comfort and i have to say they've done a really good job with these seats just like in the front you have these spectacular leather covered seats which are incredibly comfortable not something that you'd imagine happening in a defender but they've done a really good job of making sure that you're comfortable while you're sitting statically like i am right now or when you're on the move with that incredible air suspension. Now, that utilitarian aesthetic in the front also extends all the way to the back. So you have these screws that you can see, exposed paintwork over here, just to remind you that at the end of the day, this is a tool for going off-road. This is a hardcore thing. And I have to say, they have expressed that really, really well. So not only is it these design elements over here, but the fact that the materials they have used in this car are premium, but they are not precious. You get the feeling that you can get this car dirty. You can have your kids standing over here. You can get mud inside here. Under these mats, it's actually completely plastic. You can throw a hose pipe in here and pour water all over this place to make sure it's clean. So you should not be afraid of getting this car dirty. Now I'm in the third row of the Land Rover Defender. This car, like I had mentioned earlier, is available as a seven-seater. Actually, it's available as a five-seater, a six-seater with a jump seat in the front, 
or as a seven seater with these two extra seats at the back. Now, I wouldn't say that these two extra seats at the back here would be for adults, but children would be able to fit here very comfortably. As you can see, it's a bit of a tight space. But even with being a tight space, I actually have air conditioning controls for a fan over here. We still have a lot of light coming in from these Alpine lights. And I have vents for AC in addition to, get this, two more power points at the back here, 12 volt sockets at the top on the left and on the right to make sure that even if I'm sitting in the third row, I can still charge devices or anything that I need to do. In addition to that, we have an additional storage space in between the two seats and full cup holders on the left and on the right. In addition to full three point safety belts to make sure that I'm safe when I'm on the move. Coming round to the back of the Land Rover Defender and the first thing is of course this iconic spare tire mounted to the back door just to remind you that this has that DNA from the Defender that you've come to know and love. As you can see with the design like Trevor told you during the walk around, it's a very flat design to make sure that you have this incredible departure angle. And guess what? The door opens just like on the old Defenders wide across the side of course now with a stabilizer here just to make sure that you're okay to reveal about a thousand liters of very usable capacity in the back here covered of course with this rubberized material because again this is all about utility it's all about making sure that you can get this dirty and get it in the rough don't be afraid to get this car dirty because it's going to be very easy to clean this car so once this is open you have access to almost a thousand liters of good capacity here to put all the stuff that you might need when you're on the move on those long trips to the middle of nowhere now all of the stuff that was available to the people in the third row is still available at the back here which means that you have the two 12 volt sockets at the left and on the right and in addition to that you have an additional 12 volt socket at the bottom here making for a total of three power points that you can connect stuff to loads of stuff when you're on the move now, speaking of getting on the move it's time for us to take this on the road and see what the defender has to offer as a beast on and off the road so guys it's a beautiful day today and we are honored at Kazik Big Boy Trev to sample the brand new Land Rover Defender. I've been waiting for this opportunity for close to 10 years and now I have it in my hands. And it's time for me to tell you my story, how I envisioned this Defender. Has it met my expectations? We're going to find out right now. Now, let's start with the power because that's what I love. Now, Land Rover actually decided to put two different derivatives of engines in the Land Rover Defender. So you have two diesels and Two petrols. Now in Kenya we're gonna get first the two petrol derivatives. So you have the P400, which is basically a six-cylinder inline with 400 horsepower with mild hybrid technology, and of course the stunning P300, which is basically 300 horsepower of raw power courtesy of the Ingenium engine. Variable valve timing, and of course direct injection and a variable geometry turbo that gives this car exactly 300 horsepower. And I can tell you. In fast distance, you can think it's a slouch, but it actually has a lot of grunt and it's very, very peppy. It can even carry the weight of this particular vehicle. So, let's start with this particular car, the P300. So, up front, you do have a stunning Ingenium petrol 2 liter with variable valve timing and direct injection, and of course, a variable geometry turbo that reduces lag from low RPMs. Now, this recipe creates 300 horsepower or 220 kilowatts and 400 newton meters of torque that is sent to the four wheels courtesy of a ZF 8 speed automatic and of course embedded in it is the terrain response module that allows this car to modulate traction at any given time. Now, speaking of that ZF of course, it has something called machine learning or AI technology, which is brand new into this car sphere. So basically, it mimics your driving skills. So if you wake up today and you want to drive gently on the highway, so the gears will shift faster, so that you're on the higher gears, so that you are able to consume fuel. But if you want to drive aggressively, like I normally do on every day, then it hangs on to the gears, 
and allows you to explore the full potential of this Ingenium engine and gives you that driver thrill that you so love. And of course, that comes at a price. Fuel consumption, based on how you drive on this particular car, is about 8 kilometers to the liter, but that is subject to many variables. This particular chassis, it is a scalable modular chassis that you'll also find in the big boy Range Rover, the Range Rover Sport, and of course now the Discovery, and this particular one, the Defender. And one thing about this chassis, it's lightweight, it's made of an aluminium composite. Now this allows this car to be light, so you're able to have better fuel efficiency, and of course it's rigid. This Defender doesn't have the box on ladder chassis. This one has a full monocoque, so full structural strength. And all the reasons why Land Rover decided to shift from the box ladder chassis to monocoque is because of the safety concerns that the European Union had about some certain cars that were built way long ago. So basically, good crash protection, courtesy of this monocoque, and of course, the chassis can be made stiffer. It is actually 33% stiffer than the older, the last generation of the Defender. This particular variant has full air suspension, all run electronic air suspension. The best in class, there's no other 4x4 SUV that is able to rise to 900 millimeters ground clearance. You can wade through, there's none, I can tell you for a fact, there's none. That said, safety is so important. When what Land Rover have loaded this Defender with is all the pre-existing technology that Land Rover has developed over the years and as far as active and passive safety is concerned, packaged into this 21st century Defender. We're going to switch it up and hand over the reins to Mr. Mirigi, our resident tech expert, who's going to give us a lowdown on the following off-road capabilities of the Defender. Approach angle, breakover angle, departure angle, uh, terrain response. I'll also jump in and talk about that terrain response and what it does and how it makes you a proper off-road king from a novice. So stay tuned. You don't want to miss this exciting episode of Cars with Big Boy Trail. So now that we are talking about the air suspension, I think it's an important time for me to explain to you just what this thing is capable of doing. So, because this is fitted with air suspension, it can actually raise the car by about 145 millimeters, which is close to six inches above its normal ride height to give it an incredible 291 millimeters of ground clearance when it's in off-road mode with the air suspension raised to the highest level. Now, what that allows this to do is to give this car those incredible approach, departure, and breakover angles that make it one of the best off-road vehicles available in the market. So just to explain what I mean by approach, departure, and breakover, the approach angle is the steepest angle between the front of the car and the bottom of the tire, where you can climb up a hill without touching the bumper. On this car, with the suspension raised to the top, it's an incredible 38 degrees approach angle, meaning you can basically go up as much as you want. Now the breakover angle would happen like when I was going over this hill, will the bottom of the car touch the top of the hill? So that angle in between the top of the car over here and the wheel, and this one over here, so the breakover is between there and there, is 28 degrees. But with the car raised to its full suspension and the design at the back here set up the way it is, it has an incredible 40 degree departure angle and that is one of the best departure angles in the business the jeep wrangler has a departure angle of 37 degrees this in the suspension in the highest setting is 40 degrees it has basically class leading departure angles meaning you can get this thing into and out of anything that you can imagine put good tires on this thing and the world is yours now that I've shown you exactly why you need the air suspension to be in the highest setting because of the approach, departure and breakover angles, we can now set off. The terrain response program that is most suited to where we are right now, we are in a very sandy location, so I'm going to put the system on sand 
Important to note also is that this is also able to tow up to 3.5 tons and it will do this even with this 2 liter engine. Thing to note is that once you put it in the off-road mode, your throttle responses are modulated to make sure that you don't drive too fast and get yourself into trouble. But I have to say it's doing a really, really good job. I don't even feel like I'm stressing this car. But let's get into something a bit tricky. We are going to get into some mud. So I'm going to stop and switch to the mud setting. The air suspension is not throwing me around too much. Feels very planted. I can use the camera system to see exactly where the wheels are and it's doing a very good job of pulling me out of where we happen to be. So we're out of the mud. Time to go into some rocks. I'm going to get into the rock crawl setting over here. Now what that's going to do is to make sure that I maintain traction. It's not going to let the car accelerate and it's going to keep breaking the wheels so that I don't lose traction on the rocks. So what it's doing right now is first of all, it has shown the off-road display in the center driver information display. And that's actually showing me in real time whether the differentials are locked and it's showing me exactly what each section of the suspension is doing. Now welcome to the real showroom of the Land Rover. Nowhere on earth has a Land Rover had this kind of showroom where you can choose your different colors. Mr. Mrigi, what colors can we choose from? Well, the Defender is available in a selection of seven colors, including a wrap from the factory. Yes. But if you buy this car, you can customize it yourself with a range of additional optional colors like we've done over here. So of course, being in Kenya, you have red soil, black cotton, and sand. <laughs> I can tell you guys, as you can see, we were not playing when we told you that we are going to take this car to the extremes. There is nobody who's done that before. And because the big job is privileged to have our off-road expert who's right beside us. And of course, the one and only defender that has been enhanced to give you that expertise that you so desire. But Mr. Murigi, your highlight, how capable is the defender from your perspective? Well, you know the old Defender had the tagline that uh, the world is covered 70% in water and the rest is covered by Land Rover. And I think that legacy has shone through with this car. The reason why you have the feeling you have about the Defender is because of what they've done in the past 70 years. This is going to take it boldly into the next. I'm telling you guys, so remember that this particular car plays in a field but this competition. Who are the key rivals in this segment? Well, <laughs> what is a rival for the Defender, really? <laughs> but at the end of the day, if you're thinking about people who have a long legacy of doing off-road capability, but have twisted it up for 2020, I have to mention in the Kenyan market, the Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon. And how much does it cost to own the road, this particular car? Well, I mean, the feeling of owning one is priceless, but if you need to write a check, prices for the Defender start at 14 million shillings. This comes, of course, with Inchcape's five-year, 150,000 kilometer warranty, but there's more. You can actually have a five-year service and thrown into the mix just to ensure that you have peace of mind when you're conquering the world using the Defender. And I can tell you, it's unstoppable, it's unbeatable, and it has superseded our expectations. It has raised the bar, and that is something that most manufacturers are actually willing to look at. Over 10 years of waiting, it's worth your every penny. Well, that is it. Thank you so much for joining us on Cars with Big Boy Trev. It's an honor and pleasure. Do you reckon the Defender beats the competition? Let us know as seen on the social media handles below. We'll get back to you with the feedback. But before we leave, we have a few wise words, Mr. Mirigi. Tell us. One thing I have to say, honestly, Defender is the best example of the fact that there's a life outside Nairobi. And of course, the last one to our viewers. Being fast doesn't mean that you're the best. This is what this thing is showing. Being the first person to do a revamp of your old design doesn't mean you're going to be the best. These guys have shown that wait a bit and you can do magical things. Well, it's an honor. Guys, thank you so much for joining us on Cars Big Boy Drive. Until next week, drive safe. Be safe.